In this chapter, we will have a look on film effects, fire, simulation and rendering. In previous chapter, I explained already film effects workflow and all important plugin sections as well. So in case that you are not able to follow steps which I am doing now, please check out previous chapter. Also, I am sharing with you C4D scene where you can check out all simulation parameters, redshift lighting and RS volume shaders as well. As you know already, Film FX workflow contains source, forces and simulation grid. In this chapter, we will have focus on fire simulation. And I will start with object source. For better demonstration on how works fire part of simulation, I disable smoke contribution. And now we are ready to tweak object source parameters. Don't forget that if you are tweaking simulation parameters, result is visible after resimulation only. So on the beginning of creative process, always use grid size and voxel spacing values, which produce fast computer response with efficient simulation time. If I will use lower amount of fuel, as you can see, it produces smaller looking fire. If I will use larger amount of fuel, it produces larger looking fire. So it's simple as that. Oxygen contribution allows you to achieve more advanced looking fire. But this option has to be enabled in Fume Effects Simulation section. So I will show you how it works a little bit later. As I mentioned already, temperature affects entire simulation. So amount of temperature affects fire and smoke part as well. And as you can see, very low amount of temperature produce almost invisible result. So be very careful if you are changing default amount of temperature that you are not using too small or too large temperature contribution. As I mentioned already, for this example, we are not using smoke contribution. So as next step, I will scroll down to basic forces section. Here I can slightly increase velocity normal contribution. And usually I like to increase amount of basic turbulence as well. Also for better demonstration, I will increase turbulence scale. And as you can see, stronger forces contribution produce more life and more visible movement. As next step, I would like to use oxygen contribution as well. So I have to go to film effects, simulation, and in fuel section, I can find burning process options. Here I have to switch from simple model option to model with oxygen option and it allows me to use oxygen contribution now. And because we are not using smoke contribution, I can turn off entire smoke simulation section as well. As next step, I will go back to the object source and we will have look on oxygen section. If I will change amount of oxygen, as you can see, it produces different looking result. Once you like amount of fire and basic fluid shape as well, as next step, you can tweak simulation parameters. So as next step, we will go to the film effects simulation. And I will start in system section. Vorticity is a very important simulation force. If I will increase vorticity strength and vorticity scale, it will produce stronger spinning motion. Another very useful simulation force is turbulence noise. So if I will increase turbulence values, it will produce stronger turbulent motion. If I will uncheck turbulence locked option, 
it allows me to control values for each turbulence axis separately. As you can see, simulation forces produce interesting looking result. And because current result looks good, I do not need to tweak other simulation parameters. So as next step, I am ready to move into the general section where I can decrease spacing values. It will produce more detailed simulation, but in the same time, it will produce larger simulation cache and longer simulation time as well. And that's the main reason why I am changing spacing values on the end of creative process. Also remember that exported channels are contributing into the cache size. So export only channels which you would like to use for shading or rendering. And because in this example we will render fire only, we have to export fuel channel. But you can also add velocity channel if you would like to render this simulation with motion blur. As next step, I will go into the simulation section where I can increase simulation quality or any other parameter which controls simulation accuracy. But remember that higher accuracy needs also longer simulation time. So in case that your simulation time is taking too long, decrease values of maximum iterations and also check out that you are not using too low spacing values. My current simulation time is just around one minute, so I still have room for better voxel resolution. But before I will lower spacing values even more, I will check out how looks entire simulation, just to be sure that all works correctly. And now as next step, I can decrease spacing even more. As you can see, it will increase cache size and simulation time as well. Fire simulation is done. And as next step is shading and rendering. So I will switch to Redshift layout now. Scene contains RL light with volume contribution. I'm using also light target, which is pointing towards to the simulation. Volume contribution you can control in details section. As next step, I need Redshift volume shader. And I apply this shader onto the fume effect simulation grid. As next step, I have to define volume channels. And here is one important warning. For correct result, volume shader always have to contain scatter channel. Without assigned scatter channel in current Redshift build, you are not able to see result in Redshift render view. Scatter channel is usually smoke channel. But our current simulation does not contain smoke channel. We have only fuel channel and velocity channel. Fuel channel represents fuel part by itself, but also entire fire part of simulation. And as you can see, Redshift allows you to have access to all fume FX channels. So I can choose between fuel or fire channel now. For this example, I will use fire channel. And in Redshift render view, we can see now how looks current result. But as I mentioned already, in this example, we do not need scatter contribution. So as next step, I will turn off scatter contribution in advanced section. If I would like to render fire part of simulation, correct place for fire channel is emission section. So as next step, I will assign fire channel in emission section. In render view, we can see now current result. It doesn't look like flames of fire yet. So as next step, we have to remap emission ramp. For better looking details and not overexposed result, as start point, I am using three nodes. First and last node is black. And middle node contains color which represents fire. For better demonstration, 
I will zoom in. Now I can change position and color of middle node. As you can see, now we are getting more interesting looking result. Remapping RAM values is the key for good looking result. So always spend extra time with this step and try to change node position or color saturation and brightness until you can see result which you like. If you need more colors, add more nodes. As you can see, now I have reddish color in colder parts of fire and yellowish color in hotter parts of fire. If I will check out other frames, as you can see, this shading looks consistent. As next step, I will go to the advanced section where I can control emission range. If I will increase emission new max range, as you can see, it produces different looking result. We can compare it to semi-transparent flames. But if I will decrease emission range, as you can see, it produces different looking result as well. So remember that emission range is very powerful because here you can easily change fire look exactly as you need. Emission scale controls fire intensity. So as next step, you have to play with all these values and find balance which produce correct result. Also remember that fire always looks better with smoke contribution. But for better understanding how fire part of simulation works, we are not using smoke contribution yet. Another helpful step is to use Redshift's Bloom Post effect. It will help with fire integration and also with GI contribution, it will illuminate environment. I'm sharing with you a bunch of fire shaders for this simulation, so you can check them out. And as you can see, amount of nodes, color saturation and brightness or emission range strongly affecting final result. In the next chapter, we will have a look on fume effects, smoke simulation, forces, colliders, and rendering with motion blur.